praise and thank God for this beautiful morning that God has given in each one of our lives. For today's morning meditation, let's open our Bibles to Isaiah chapter 45, verse 5 and 6. I am the Lord, and there is no other apart from me. There is no God. I will strengthen you, though you have not acknowledged me, so that from the rising of the sun to the place of its setting, men may know that it is none beside me. I am the Lord, and there is no other. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we praise and thank you, Lord, for this morning. Jesus, thank you, Lord, once again. You have given a new day in each one of our lives. Lord, thank you, Lord, for the word. Yes, Lord, you are the only God. There is no other God. Help us to understand. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. When we read this word, the one and only God, so Isaiah prophesied to a nation that has turned a deaf ear to the Lord. He wanted to see the nation of Judah return to serving God with humility and love for their neighbors. But he was calling to pronounce judgments to on a people offering meaningless sacrifices in the temple and committing injustice throughout the nation. It provides the most prophetic picture of Jesus in the entire Old Testament. So what is the Lord saying? Despite some religions like Islam and Judaism claiming are otherwise, Christianity stands firmly upon the doctrine. Right? For me, it seems the confusion is about people understanding of the God of the Bible, thinking that each person of the Trinity is a separate God. God is a separate and God is a spirit and the names of the God are spoken of in the persons of the Godhead, God's Son, the Holy Spirit. The word Trinity originated years after Jesus walked on the earth, but the Bible is clear that God is Father, Son, and Spirit. All share the attributes of the Spirit God and also that God is one. Thus, the doctrine of religion of God is one and different from other religions such as Judaism or Islam. But the Trinity is grounded in the premise that there is one eternal God. In the study of God, one arrives at the words in the Bible that are used to define God. In the Hebrew text are words Elohim and Yahweh. In this passage today, Ashaya, 45 verse 5 when we read, we translate it in English as I am the Lord and there is no other. Besides me, there is no God. I will rid you though you have not known me. The Hebrew follows a different order of the word and from the interior it says and though not I will rid you. There is no besides me other and there is no Yahweh I am. This was is Ashaya. This was an Ashaya is pronounced to Cyrus the great king of Persia. But he is a hardened king that is used by God to deliver the Jews from the Babylonian captivity. God spoke to him directly here. And this was declared to Cyrus. God is Elohim or deity, and God is Yahweh or Lord. Thus the passage could read, I, the Lord of Israel, is the only deity. God is declaring that he is the only deity or the only God. So here, that often people say that all religions lead to the same destination. How can this be so when the Lord of Israel, Yahweh, declares that he is the only Elohim or the Lord? Or are there multiple gods mentioned in history? Yes, but this God says he is the only God. Back to Cyrus the Great, God speaks to him and will 
use his hate in God to accomplish his purposes. Whether Cyrus acknowledges him as the only true God does not matter here. Cyrus God is still only Yahweh, just as all the people of the world only have one God. As the scripture states by God, though you have not known me, meaning though you have not acknowledged me as the only God, and as your God, this doesn't mean that God does not use him because he is he in fact says, I will get you. As I, as we look at the landscape of even our governing bodies, we often have different forms of how the government leads and more often today it is about a group rather than a single person. The dictators in our history have proven to rule in a harmful way. So there is accountability sought. Even in the church, this is prescribed by having a group of elders make decisions collectively or putting it to the congregation as a whole. And yet in the realm of duty, we, ha- we only have one God. He is our one and only leader. Right? These things take place not because of anything that we do, but because of what God does. In the text he says, I form light and create darkness. I make well-being and create calamity. I am the Lord who does all these things. Notice that the Lord claims responsibility for both the good and the bad that we encounter in life. It is he who destroys and it is he who builds. He specially destroys in us our foolish pride and self-confidence through which Satan would deceive us in thinking that we have some merit or ability within ourselves that enables us to stand in the presence of the Holy God. Even a casual glance at the law of God will demolish that false notion. The Lord does this not because he is cruel but because he is loving. He knows that we will never be receptive to the good news of forgiveness and salvation through the blood of Jesus as long as we think that we can justify ourselves. And so, as many loving parents, he destroys the attitude within us that would bring our destruction. But he builds in the place of what he has destroyed. In the gospel of his son, he replaces our self-righteous attitude with the true righteousness that was accomplished for us in the life and the ministry of the Savior who sent to redeem us. Amen. He replaces our self-justifying attitude with the true justification that he accomplished for us in the perfect life and the innocent suffering and death of the Savior. Amen. He replaces our self-confidence with the sure confidence that in are only in the slain and risen Christ. And he replaces our inadequate efforts Please him with the perfectly acceptable works that his spirit inspires and strengthening us through the gospel. This is what motivates us to do the things that glorify the Lord and proclaim his salvation in Christ. We do them not in fear but in gratitude for the things that he has done to redeem us from sin and death and to restore us as his dear children. There is a reason why he does all this, as he says to Cyrus in the text that people may know from the rising of the sun and from the west and that there is none besides me. No other God or would do the things that our God has done for us in the life and the ministry of his son. The reason is that there is no other God. My dear friends, there are a lot of other things, people, places, interests and ideas that people may worship as gods. Things that they allow to control them, things to which they devote all of their time, money and attention and in which they have confidence. But these other gods are no gods at all. God is one, the one who in his mercy and grace have reached 
down to his fallen creation in the person of his son and has redeemed it. This is good news. Good news that we are privileged to share with the whole world. He himself has made that possible and he himself will enable us to do it. Today morning, do you believe that he is the only God? Do you believe he is leading you? Do you believe there is none other like him? He is not three gods. He is one God who created us in his own image. And when he is coming back to take us, he is not showing any difference in between him and us. He wants us to make like him. He is not saying he will make us like a slave or below him. He is giving us a chance to sit beside him, equal to him. He is the creator and we are the creation, but still he is saying that he will give us the same privilege. We will be like God, same like God. What a privilege, my friends. He is the only God and there is no one else like him. Trust in him for everything. Very soon he is coming. There is very less time that is left that we are going to live in this world. So trust on our Almighty God in everything in your life. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we praise and thank you, Lord, for this morning. Jesus, Lord, in this world of confusion that we live in, there are multiple gods mentioned all the time. Lord, help me, help us. To be one that clarifies that the Bible speaks of only one God. He is Yahweh and He is the only one, the only Elohim, the only deity. In this world, Lord, that is focused on tolerance and have different names for gods, we need to be that voice speaking that there is only one God and there is no other God. Lord, help us to stand on that mountain top and declare this without thinking of the consequences. Lead us forward, Lord. Help us to trust on you, Lord. Help us to become like you, Father. Help each one of us, Lord. In Jesus' precious holy name we pray. Amen. May God bless you, my brothers and sisters. Jesus is coming very soon. Maranatha.